So today, our last session of the day is managing soil nutrients. So our first speaker is Dr. Philip Moore from USDA ARS, and he is gonna chat with us about fertilizer value of nitrogen captured using ammonia scrubbers. Thanks, Mary. Uh, my co-authors on the talk today are, are Jerry Martin with USDA and Fayetteville and uh, Dr. Hong Lee, who's at University of Delaware. Well, according to EPA, the, uh, the biggest source of atmospheric ammonia is uh, in the U.S. is animal manure. And about a fourth of that is believed to be due to uh, originate from poultry manure. Uh, we found that about half of the nitrogen excreted from broiler chickens is lost to the atmosphere as ammonia before the manure is even removed from the, from the barn. So a lot of nitrogen loss. Ammonia emission factor for 50-day-old broilers found in that study was 46 grams of ammonia per bird, about a tenth of a pound per bird. So in Arkansas, where we grow about a billion uh, broilers, we get about 100 million pounds of ammonia uh, lost from chicken houses uh, each year. Uh, this is a huge waste of a, a fertilizer resource and also causes uh, air and, and water pollution. Well, nitrogen that enters lakes and rivers from the atmosphere has the same effect <coughs> on eutrophication as that that enters from uh, runoff. Uh, and also when ammonia reacts with NOx or SOx compounds in the air, you're making very fine particulate matter that can cause uh, human health problems when inhaled. Uh, then when ammonia is deposited uh, into the soil, it is a lot of times converted to nitrate, that's nitrification, and that's an acid forming process back in the 80s. In Holland, their national forest started dying. Uh, they thought it was acid rain at first, but then they found there wasn't enough acid rain to cause that, and about half of the acid deposition was actually due to ammonia, and most of that was from, from animal rearing facilities. Well, currently, the only technology used in the U.S. to control ammonia emissions from chicken houses is litter acidification using uh, chemicals like alum or sodium bisulfate. But in Europe, they use uh, acid scrubbers. Uh, the exhaust air from barn is passed through a, a reactor, and an acid solution is sprayed, and you transfer that ammonia from uh, the gas phase to the liquid phase. And in Holland, uh, they've got really good acid scrubbers that not only remove uh, ammonia, but they remove uh, odors and dust uh, from the air. 30% removal for odor and 16 to 90% removal for a particulate matter. But the other side of that coin is they're very expensive. For a typical chicken house, their scrubber's about $250,000. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of those on chicken houses. Uh, they use sulfuric acid to scrub ammonia. And almost all the scrubbers on farms in Holland are on uh, swine farms, and that's because you have uh, very heavy dust loading in the air from broiler farms, and that clogs up their packing material they're using in their uh, scrubbers. We've been working on scrubbers for about a decade now, and the goal of our research was to develop a scrubber that can handle very heavy dust loadings, like you get from chicken houses, uh, without clogging. Another goal was to develop a scrubber that was both simple and safe enough for a grower to operate without any outside technical assistance. And then in a perfect world, the scrubbers would be cost effective to operate. And that third one has been uh, the hard one to hit. This is our ARS uh, air scrubber. Uh, you've got a, a dust scrubber uh, and ammonia scrubber. You want to capture that dust first just using water because uh, if you don't have that on there, then you waste a lot of acid. Uh, the, the, uh, the dust from poultry houses has a lot of lime in it, and so it'll consume a lot of acid. So you want to get rid of the dust first, and then our second uh, phase is the, the acid scrubber. These are for minimum vent fans. Uh, the Dutch have found that that's where you get your biggest bang for the buck. If you try to put these on the tunnel fans, they have to be gigantic and they're very, very expensive. So we, we're focusing on minimum vent. The dust cover can hold up to eight rows of slats. They're uh, just at uh, 45 degree angles. This is what our scrubber looks like. So you would attach it to the uh, minimum vent uh, fans of a chicken house. 
and then you've got a little water reservoir and you're pumping that up and recycling the water to capture the dust and then you have your acid reservoir here and you're recycling that. We've got a feather trap uh, right there. Uh, it's in this next slide uh, to catch big particulate matter feathers and stuff so you don't clog up your pumps uh, in there. Initially, we included the plastic <coughs> fuel cell material on the exhaust end. This stuff is used in the Dutch scrubbers and German scrubbers. Uh, all in Europe, they use them. Uh, it's very effective for reducing ammonia, but um, we thought it improved the performance, but uh, three or four weeks on a chicken house, and it was clogged, so we, we got rid of those. Well, we've been doing research uh, on commercial roller farms in Arkansas, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Uh, Dr. Hong Lee gave a talk this morning that some of you may have seen. Uh, we've used several different types of acid in these scrubbers, including sodium bisulfate, uh, alum, and sulfuric acid. And, and this work was funded by a conservation innovation grant. Well, in Arkansas, the average electric use by the scrubbers uh, for a flock was about uh, 544 kilowatt hours, which is about $27 worth of electricity. Uh, the average amount of water used by a flock is about 1,000 uh, gallons. This is ammonia capturing efficiency. Uh, in this case, we're using sodium bisulfate, which is sold to poultry growers as a PLT or poultry litter treatment. And we found this is it's pretty good because it dissolves very readily in water. Uh, aluminum sulfate takes a lot more stirring to get it to dissolve. And you can see our efficiency vary over time, uh, different runs. Uh, varied from 38 to 77 percent, but I think our average was like 55 percent, uh, and that was much better in Hong's uh, talk this morning, but a lot of his, they had let the, the acid be consumed. They weren't checking it every day. They were just checking it once a week. So he's, I think when he published, he said that he's going to only use those values when the, the, uh, the acid scrubber had actual acid in it. Well, although the efficiency of the scrubber was not too bad, 55 percent reduction, if you look at the cost effectiveness, it's, it's ugly. Uh, average amount of nitrogen uh, caught with a 50 pound bag of PLT was uh, 3 kilograms or 6.64 pounds. Uh, this bag cost us when we bought it $15.50. So that's equivalent to about $2.33 per pound of nitrogen. And that doesn't include the, the price of the scrubber. Our scrubbers, we got ripped off on, on the, uh, uh, some of this stuff and, and we end up costing about uh, $10,000 to build each scrubber. I think you can build them for less than half of that. But still doesn't include the price of the scrubber, the electricity, the water, or the labor to operate it. So, uh, you know, you can go out and buy fertilizer nitrogen for a dollar a pound, cheaper in bulk. So the cost effectiveness don't look good. People say well, it should be better for sulfuric acid, but it's not. Even when you, you know, I was buying 30 gallon drones of sulfuric acid, and it was almost exactly the same price that I was paying for the P PLT per mole of acid. You have to have an 18 wheeler truck of sulfuric acid to get really cheap acid, and no poultry farmer is going to have that because of all the <coughs> danger involved in that much sulfuric acid. I like using the, uh, the dry acids. On some watersheds, growers can't apply poultry litter or swamp manure because of soil test phosphorus thresholds or phosphorus index thresholds, and they have to buy commercial nitrogen fertilizer to meet the nitrogen needs of the crops. Yet, there's about 300 million kilograms of ammonia being emitted from chicken houses every year in the U.S. That's a lot of nitrogen. Waste, it, it represents a huge amount of potential fertilizer. Uh, in Europe, the nitrogen-rich solutions are taken to a fertilizer plant and, and they uh, further refine that into a fertilizer. Well, that's another step that's going to increase the cost of that. Uh, and, and so the economics look even uglier. So our question was, uh, why not use this fertilizer resource on the farm where it's generated? Because usually you got these guys, in our case, are have forages and they're growing cattle. A lot of places they're growing corn or, or different things. So the objectives of the study were to determine the fertilizer efficiency of nitrogen captured from the exhaust air poultry houses using different acids and to determine if any of the scrubber solutions result in a decrease in soil test phosphorus or phosphorus runoff. <clears throat> we had uh, four acid scrubbers attached to sidewall fans at commercial roller houses in northwest Arkansas. 
And at the end of each flock, the uh, scrubber solutions were transferred to large storage tanks. And if the pH of the solutions were uh, below six, then we added enough sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the solutions. Uh, and then we analyzed all those different solutions and we plotted them to small plots at a rate equivalent to, uh, uh, excuse me, 112 uh, pounds of nitrogen per hectare, 100 pounds per acre. And then we were comparing that to ammonium nitrate, which uh, was dissolved in water. So our treatments in the study were unfertilized control, potassium bisulfate scrubber solution, aluminum sulfate scrubber solution, sulfuric acid scrubber solution, sodium bisulfate scrubber solution, and then ammonium nitrate uh, dissolved in water. They were just applied to small plots by hand. Again, we wanted to dissolve that ammonium nitrate so it would be in the same form as the scrubber solutions in liquid form. Uh, we had four replications per treatment in a randomized block design. Every few weeks, we would uh, measure yields with a bag of mower, and there were five harvests over a period of five months, and this was, this was uh, conducted last summer. This is cumulative dry matter yields, and the plots were mainly fescue. There was a mix. Uh, there was some weeds in there, and there was, some, uh, there was also uh, some Bermuda grass in there, but mainly fescue. Um, of course, all these treatments, fertilizer treatments, were resulted in higher yields than our unfertilized control, although the control yielded a, a lot of uh, grass, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we got significantly higher yields with potassium bisulfate, which we expected because you're not only getting the ammonia, you're getting that extra potassium. The problem is potassium bisulfate is not made in the U.S. Uh, we had to get this from China, and, and so it's very expensive. Now, the folks at Jones Hamilton make sodium bisulfate, and you can use the exact same process, their exact uh, plants, to convert to make potassium bisulfate. So if, if you know, if this ever went, if it ever flew, I think that would be actually the best one that you could use because then you would have an ammonium uh, potassium sulfate fertilizer. Now, some of the weird results here, we also got higher yields with sodium bisulfate than some of these others. And I can't really explain that. I don't know why uh, that happened. Um, this is cumulative nitrogen uptake in kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. And there were no significant differences in, uh, in nitrogen uptake, although it was higher than the unfertilized control. Still, this, this control is really high, over 100 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. That's a lot for grass to take up in, in five months with no fertilizer. One of the guys I work with at the University of Arkansas is a soybean breeder, and he says, Philip, you know, Fayetteville is the only place where my non-nodulating soybeans yield the same as the nodulating soybeans. You know, he said, uh, is the chicken industry putting that much ammonia in the air that, that we're getting that much nitrogen deposition? I said, well, okay, probably so. You know, there's probably, and actually we've been looking at atmospheric ammonia at a couple of sites in Franklin County and Madison County and using passive samplers, and both of these are part of the ambient ammonia uh, monitoring network. And, and you can see that in the summertime, uh, the ammonia, and that's when we're doing our study, was about four or five times higher uh, in this location, Madison County, this is actually near Fayetteville, and uh, whereas in the National Forest, uh, it's much, much lower. And, and so I think what we are seeing in Fayetteville, uh, while our controls had so much uh, nitrogen uptake, part of that was atmospheric deposition. We also did rainfall simulation uh, five months after we applied the scrubber solutions to see if there were any potential effects on phosphorus runoff. Uh, in northwest Arkansas, we have very high soil test phosphorus levels. Uh, you can see four, five hundred, six hundred pounds per acre on a lot of farms where they've been growing chickens for, for 30 years. And uh, so with this simulation, we, we applied rain at uh, two inches per hour uh, for sufficient duration to cause 30 minutes of continuous runoff and then analyze the runoff for total and cycle phosphorus. This is some of the results, the cycle phosphorus load and runoff in grams per hectare as a function of different treatments. And for some reason, the sulfuric acid had a little bit higher phosphorus runoff than the rest of the treatments. Uh, and alum, or aluminum sulfate, was significantly uh, lower than that. And then the rest of them uh, weren't different. Uh, I've done a lot of research in my career putting aluminum sulfate into poultry litter to reduce ammonia and phosphorus runoff, so this wasn't a real uh, big surprise. 
This is uh, one of the reasons why that happened. This is water soluble phosphorus in the soil, water extractable be milligrams per kilogram for the different treatments. And, and you can see that aluminum sulfate has resulted in much lower uh, water soluble P in the soil. So we're thinking if you were applying this uh, at every, uh, you know, a couple of times a year or whatever, over time, you could really reduce that water soluble P in the soil and, and have lower uh, phosphorus runoff. And at the same time, be getting uh, higher yields. If you do the math, if one of these scrubbers could catch five pounds of nitrogen a day, and you had two on each chicken house, that's 10 pounds of nitrogen per day. Uh, and you just did that for, uh, say, 200 days of the year, that's a ton. 2,000 pounds of nitrogen. If you have uh, uh, five chicken houses, that's 10,000 pounds. And that's kind of a normal operation in Arkansas, and also the normal operation has about 100 acres. Well, that'd be enough nitrogen to put 100 pounds of nitrogen on 100 acres. That's all your nitrogen needs you really have to have, and so you could, the litter could be taken somewhere else. Malik 3 phosphorus. Malik 3 is what they use for soil test phosphorus. It's got all these strong acids in it and everything. And so you're not going to see any difference there because it's going to rip up those aluminum phosphate bonds. And, and that's why we saw no, no uh, significant difference there on, on that. Some of the conclusions, dry matter production by forage fertilizer and scrubber solutions was as high, or in some cases higher than ammonium nitrate fertilizer when applied at the same nitrogen rate. Nitrogen uptake by forages was not significantly different from com commercial fertilizer when applied at the same rate. Water extractable phosphorus in soil and phosphorus runoff was lower in plots fertilized with scrubber solutions where alum was the acid used to capture ammonia. But bottom line right now, it's much easier and more cost effective to prevent ammonia emissions from rural houses using uh, litter amendments like alum or, or PLT uh, than to use scrubbers to capture nitrogen. <coughs> We haven't given up yet. Uh, for several years now, we've been working on something else. Uh, as I said earlier, the economics of using any acid on any of these scrubbers, even those beautiful European scrubbers, are, are questionable. You just can't make, make that work. It's, it's going to be too expensive. We looked at free acids, waste acids, all the stuff, just hauling it to the place. Uh, it cost a lot of money to haul liquids. You know, and then half the time they had some kind of crap in them that you don't want to put out on your fields, you know. So we decided to develop a biological system to, to try to uh, make the acid needed to, to capture uh, ammonia. And we've developed in the lab acid tolerant nitrifiers that when they convert that ammonia to nitrate, they make two moles of acidity. And so and we've actually taken this to the farm uh, two years ago at Seattle. I gave a talk in the Waste Worth Conference on that. And, and that's, that's the thing I'm going to try to go. All the problem with our bugs is they're not cold tolerant. I'm going to try to get some uh, cold tolerant nitrifiers from Matias here. We're going to work together to see if we can make bugs that will go year round and nitrify them and use that ammonia and maybe make a cost effective screw. Thank you very much. Any questions? We have time for a couple quick ones. Well, what does your forage cover look like when you did that simulated rainfall? How tall was it? Or? Yeah. What time what, oh, by the time we did it, it was like September. Yeah. It was pretty short. Okay. And I think it had been right after one of the harvests, so it was, you know, nice and short. Yes, sir. What kind of concentration of whatever uh, of nitrogen did you get in your solutions? Well, it starts almost zero and it just builds up. And it just, if you just leave that scrubber on there, and you keep adding acid every time the pH, you know, when the pH goes to seven, you've got to add more acid. You can, I've seen as high as like 10,000 uh, milligrams of nitrogen per liter. Uh, and usually with these dry salts, you get some gunk in there when it starts getting that high. With sulfuric acid, you can, you can go higher than that, you know, because it's all liquids. Great, thank you. Thank you.